All right, so I want to talk about doing some uh, trigonometric integrals here, and I want to do an example of kind of a, a really difficult function. Uh, what we're going to need to know for this, we're going to need to know uh, what we're talking about by integrals. So if you're unfamiliar with the difference between definite and indefinite integrals, I have a video already on my channel that will explain that integrals definite versus indefinite uh, that will be on this integrals playlist and should help clear up any differences between those things. Uh, we're going to be looking for a definite integral here, so a quick recap of that is we're looking for an integral over some interval a to b of some function to some variable of integration uh, or integrated at with respect to rather some variable of integration and this is going to give us a function of area which is going to tell us on this function if this is uh, our x-axis and we have a and v and this is our function, we draw lines up, how much space is under here, underneath uh, the, the curve, what's the area underneath that curve. So that is what we're talking about uh, with our definite integrals, and this is going to be a definite trigonometric integral, so we're going to have an interval there. Our interval is going to be kind of weird, we're also going to need to know how to do uh, u-substitution, is going to be uh, extremely important here, this problem will not be uh, be easy at all without u-sub, so uh, check out my video on the basics of u-substitution if you, if you need some clarification there. So, uh, and also, it's going to be useful to uh, know a uh, sum and difference formulas for uh, trigonometric sum and difference formulas, which we'll go over later also. I'll do a quick recap of that during this video. And uh, as well, just uh, if I say, hey, what's sine of pi or cosine of pi over 6, that type of thing, it would be a good idea to have the unit circle and those values memorized, but we will also... Uh, uh, do a quick recap of that during this. So let's go ahead and get started. I would like to evaluate the definite integral over the interval 0 to t over 2. So a, a, a rational up there in the, uh, in the, as the upper limit of integration of sine of 2 pi over t minus a dt. So, what does this mean? It means that we're evaluating a function of sine, this is our integrand, sine of 2 pi over t minus a, and we're evaluating it over the limits of integration 0 and t over 2. Now, our upper limit of integration is kind of weird here because it is itself a rational function. It's itself a quotient. So we will talk about what that means and the implications of that shortly. And then we're evaluating it dt. This is our variable of integration, which means we're integrating this with respect to the variable t. So that's going to be important. And notice this t is lowercase. So this is a variable, whereas this t here uh, is going to be treated slightly differently. So, all right, what are the steps here? What do we need to do to get started? Well, let's go ahead and start doing by, start by doing a u substitution. So, uh, let's substitute this. Let's go ahead and call this u. So, if we do that, we can say that u. Oh, my bad there. We can say that u is equal to. Sorry, two pi over t t minus a. Now, by that uh, same token, we need to find du. So if u is 2 pi over t minus a, well, look at this. This is, what's, what kind of function is this? What does this look like? Well, this is just a line, right? So since it's just a line, our du is going to be kind of, is going to be pretty easy. Our du is just going to be, look at that, 2 pi over t dt. This a goes away because, this negative a goes away because who cares? It's a constant, and constants always differentiate straight down to zero. So there's no need for us to worry about that. So this is our u, and this is our du. So we're already making some pretty good progress. So let's find out if we can, if we can figure out what dt is from this, and we can. It's extremely easy. Let's just switch these things. If du is 2 pi over t dt, then dt is just t over 2 pi du. We're just switching these things, so it's a pretty simple algebraic operations here. Uh, so I don't think we need to have too much explanation. All right, so this is awesome. We, so we have this. Here was step one. Here was step two. And here is step three to our u substitution. So we did a u sub. We said that u was 2 pi over t t minus a, 
and uh, we found du from that, and du was 2 pi over t dt, so from that we were able to come up with dt, which by just doing some algebraic stuff and switching things around in our heads, we know that dt is equal to t over 2 pi du. So now I think the next best step for us is to go ahead and start focusing on these endpoints. Because we've done a U substitution, the easiest thing for us to do is to go ahead and use that U to change our endpoints. That U is going to affect our endpoints because of what we did to it. So let's go ahead and evaluate U at each of those uh, limits of integration, uh, the, the, the limits of the interval of the function. And uh, by doing that, we can get our new endpoints for a brand new integral, uh, and then we'll talk about the integrand that's going to be inside of that. So, all right, let's start with that. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to say, what is u of t over 2? And we're doing that because our upper limit of integration is t over 2. And then we need to say, uh, what is u of 0? We're doing that because zero is our lower limit of integration right here. So that's the, our reasoning behind that. All right, so let's go ahead and start doing this math. U of t over 2, well, that's just going to be 2 pi over t times t over 2 minus a. And our u of 0 is just going to be, sorry, equals, it's going to equal 2 pi over t times 0, which is going to be crazy convenient and very easy for us to figure out what that is, minus a. So, u of 0, well, this is just going to equal negative a. And our u of uh, t over 2, we can just do some simple cancellation here and get that this is just pi minus a. These t's cancel, these 2's cancel, so we're just going to get pi minus a. Okay, so this is great. This is pretty straightforward and simple. We have uh, our u of t over 2, and we have our u of 0, so this is excellent. We're making extraordinary progress here. Let me... Ah. Okay, fantastic. So, we've got that. Now let's go ahead and we have our new endpoint, so let's go ahead and rewrite this. And let's do this on our new page so we have plenty of room. Our new integral is going to be pi minus a is our upper limit from right here, remember? And on our bottom limit is going to be negative a from right here. We calculated that with our u. And now what's this? What's our new integrand going to be? Well, let's go back and look. We have sine of something dt. So let's, uh, now that we've done a u substitution, it's still going to be sine, but it's going to be just sine of u times t over 2 pi du, right? Because now we're evaluating things with respect to u. We've substituted that out, and we're no longer evaluating with respect to t. That's what the u substitution allows us to do. So what is this going to end up equaling? I apologize, having some technical difficulties here. All right, my apologies, I've gotten that fixed. So now let's just do this. What if we just pull this out in front of the integral, and we have t over 2 pi times the definite integral with the limits, uh, the limits of integration at still at pi minus a and negative a of sine u du. Okay, great. All right, so what is this going to be? Well, this is just going to be t over 2 pi times, and now we will evaluate this, negative cosine. Now, why negative cosine u? Well, negative cosine u because we're just taking the antiderivative of sine. What's the antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine, because negative cosine prime is sine. So, uh, with any variable you choose. So, we have negative cosine u, and we're going to evaluate it. That's what this little backwards bracket here means. We're going to evaluate this at, of course, you guessed it, pi minus a and negative a. So, that's going to give us 
not pi, I'm sorry, t over 2 pi, cosine u evaluated again at negative a and pi minus a. Now, why did we flip those? Why were we allowed to do that? Well, you notice that we had a negative cosine here, and now we just have a positive cosine. So when we change that sign, the in a integral, and we'll, we'll, let's just look at this little rule really quickly. The integral a to b something, whatever in here, doesn't matter, uh, is the same thing as the negative integral from b to a of whatever inside the integral. It doesn't matter. So that's why, except we just we would have to make that negative. So this is why we're able to use this rule to switch. We're switching the endpoints because we switched this. We made the integral negative. So that's all we did there, and that's, that's why we were able to do that. So now we have uh, pi, uh, t over 2 pi cosine u evaluated at negative a and pi minus a. Now, ooh, what are we going to do? What are we going to need to do here? Well, we're going to need to remember the formula for uh, uh, the difference formula for cosine. Well, the difference formula for cosine, if we don't remember, and let's just write this here, is that cosine of alpha minus beta is just equal to cosine alpha, cosine beta, times cosine beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta. So this is going to be really important for us to keep in the back of our heads here. So now let's use this function to start evaluating things because we, of course, we have a difference here, right? So we can go ahead and we can go ahead and write our t over 2 pi, right? That shouldn't be a problem. And then, of course, this is going to be times, now, cosine alpha times cosine beta plus sine alpha times sine beta. So what are we going to get here? Well, look at what we've got. We're going to get our cosine of negative a minus our cosine of pi minus a. And this is going to give us see here. Let's see if I can change colors, make this, is the red visible? Yes, it is. Great. So this is going to give us t over 2 pi of cosine alpha minus, because this cosine negative a minus, that, that cancels that, makes this cosine positive, and I'm sorry, I should have said cosine a, not cosine alpha. This is going to give us cosine a minus cosine of pi cosine alpha, cosine a, I'm sorry, not alpha, plus sine pi, sine a. So now, what is all of this? Well, let's go ahead and start marking through some things that we can here. We have this, uh, you know, we have cosine a, we have this uh, cosine pi here, so this is just going to be negative 1. And then, well, let's write this in, in white ink. Cosine pi, we can get rid of that, and we just have negative 1. I apologize here, we have negative 1. And now cosine, uh, let's see, okay, we have our sine of pi, which is just going to be 0. And because we're multiplying 0 times sine a, it doesn't matter what we're multiplying it by, 0 times anything kills it, so we can just ignore this entire side of the equation now. So now we just, we're just left with uh, t over 2 pi times 2 cosine a, because we have a cosine a here, we have a cosine a here, so this comes together to be 2 cosine a. And then, uh, let's go ahead and rewrite this on the next page. So all we're ending up with is t over 2 pi times 2 cosine a. And let's make this just equal to everything. Uh, I'm sorry, let's make this simplified. We're going to end up with t cosine a over pi. 
Yes. All right. So we're done. And that is the definite integral of sine of 2 pi over t minus a dt evaluated over the interval 0 to t over 2. So now we see what we have here when we have a trigonometric function with a pseudo variable in the uh, as a limit of integration. Uh, U-sub is necessary. We need trig formulas, uh, the difference formula. We had to do all that. And then this, all the math was actually pretty easy once we got here. So this was our final answer, that uh, it's just t cosine a over pi. And so let's actually, I think, we can go ahead and, and write this uh, down here. That Let's just make it nice and pretty. The integral from 0 to t over 2 of sine 2 pi t over t, make sure I've got this right, sine 2 pi t over t minus a, yes. dt, well, this is simply equal, ugh, horrible, this is equal to t cosine a over pi. So this is our final answer, and there is no more work to be done. That's all there is to it.